Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Yes, I'm back. I know there were some of you who were very upset that I was gone. Um, I know. I, I there's one of you I see in the comments who's like Sarah Gonzalez takes the most time off at, at Blaze ever. First of all, fact check, not true. Second of all, I do have a family and I love you guys so much, but my kids are more important. <laughs> I'm just gonna to put it bluntly. Okay, love ya. But I need to spend time with my family, as it turns out. Also, third, if you even knew the amount of time off that I get, that I'm entitled to, that I don't take, you would be shocked. I'm basically working for free just trying to put out these shows for you guys. So you're welcome. Okay, but I'm happy to be back. It's nice to be missed. I appreciate it. Um, And today we've got, you know, there's a whole bunch to get into, including, you know, you guys are going to be shocked to hear there are more issues at the border as a member of Hezbollah whose intention was, you know, just to go to New York City and make a bomb was apprehended. And that's just that's just who we're catching. So don't worry. Nothing to see here. Also, the latest on Fannie Willis. But uh, first. The mainstream media just continues to bend over backwards and jump through hoops and all sorts of mental gymnastics tumbles to defame President Trump in just I feel like it's just a increasingly egregious fashion. Every single time you think that they can't stoop lower, there they go, all because I guess orange man bad. And honestly, I guess because at the end of the day, they are scared of Trump beating their half-dead candidate. I don't know why else they would engage in this type of behavior. And the latest began over the weekend when Donald Trump was at a rally in Ohio talking about the American automobile industry. Watch. Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years, 34% of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it, went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those guys if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. I don't see the controversy. I feel like that's a pretty fair statement, right? The automobile industry would be decimated with another four years of Joe Biden, as would, I would say, the rest of the country, as would, I would say, probably the rest of the globe, considering all of the global unrest that we've seen pop up all across the world with Joe Biden at the helm of things. Now, I don't know anyone with two brain cells to rub together who disagrees with that. But this, of course is what you saw all over the mainstream media. NBC News, Trump says there will be a bloodbath if he loses the election. Oh, my God. New York Times, Trump says some migrants are, quote, not people and predicts a bloodbath if he loses. Oh, no, the horror. Let's see over at the Biden-Harris Ever quick to uh, jump in on the disinformation campaign was the Biden-Harris account on X, which posted tonight. Donald Trump said there would be a bloodbath if he wasn't elected and that if he lost, there would be no more elections. After opening the general election by meeting with authoritarian leaders and rallying alongside conspiracy theorists, Donald Trump continues to praise dictators, promise to pardon political violence and launch racist attacks against black and brown Americans. Condemning Pardoning political violence. Wow, what a strange flex from the same people who started GoFundMes to bail out BLM protesters burning down cities and like looting Nike stores. And now all of a sudden they're like, political violence is terrible. Huh, interesting. And of course, the talking heads 
had to get their say on the matter. Here was ABC News. And former President Trump's campaign now on the defensive after his fiery rhetoric at a rally in Dayton, Ohio on Saturday night. Trump warning while discussing the economy that there would be a, quote, bloodbath if he is not reelected in November. This after the former president kicked off the event by paying tribute to those who attacked the U.S. Capitol oh on God. January 6th. President Biden's oh campaign God. swiftly denouncing those comments as threats of political violence. Those who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Oh, I'm sorry, do you mean those who were taken on a guided tour by Capitol Police and left peacefully and nonviolently? Are those the people that you're talking about? Because those are the people that Donald Trump continues to talk about, right? Uh, Nancy Pelosi also never want to miss out on a disinformation campaign. Remember those phrases that they always want to use against us, even though they're the ones who are actually doing it? Here's more disinformation from good old drunk Nancy Pelosi. Because he's even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? There's something wrong here. How um, respectful I am of the American people and their goodness. Mm. But how much more do they have to see from him to understand mm. that this isn't what our country is about? Mm. Is he going to exact a Is he going to exact a bloodbath? Is that what he means? Is that what he's going to do? Shut up. These people are not serious people. And I will tell you, I think that I saved the best one for last because Joe Scarborough over on MSNBC might take the cake for the most idiotic, unhinged response. And by the way, I want you to watch this. As you're watching this, Matt, I don't, I don't think he even believes the drivel that he spews. Watch. He's talking about a bloodbath for America. It's laid out in the terms of it. And these idiots uh, on Twitter, uh, these idiots uh, on, 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 on cable news, these you? idiots on Sunday shows going, well, yeah, well, presidents, you know, he was talking only about the auto industry and this is mm -hmm. one more. It's just bullshit. Let me mm. say that at 6.15 a.m. It's just bullshit. Mm. He knew what he was doing. We're not stupid. Americans aren't stupid. He was talking about a bloodbath. Sometimes a bloodbath means a bloodbath. <laughs> And when he finishes by saying, and that's just going to be the least of it, right. seriously, Ye these people may be stupid. We're not. No, but you really are, Joe. I, in fact, I think you might be the dumbest one up there because, yes, sometimes a bloodbath does just mean a bloodbath, which according to the freaking dictionary, Merriam-Webster would mean as one of its uses right there, for those of you who are listening on audio podcasts, I have a literal screenshot from Merriam-Webster, bloodbath, a major economic disaster. Don't take my word for it. Just check the freaking dictionary, okay? So I'm gonna call bullshit on that, Joe Scarborough, at 6.15 p.m. How about that? And, you know, I don't know. I just feel like, these people know this, right? Like Joe Scarborough, he knows this. I, he's dumb, okay, but he knows this. You know how I know he knows this? Because he has in fact used the exact same language numerous times. On the eve of this bloodbath, it was gonna be a bloodbath. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Would be an absolute bloodbath. Bloodbath, this bloodbath in South Carolina. This could be a bloodbath. There will be a bloodbath at the convention. An absolute bloodbath. Mm. This was gonna be a bloodbath. Does this nominee get through without a bloodbath? <laughs> Hashtag bloodbath. Oh. We're gonna be having bloodbath. This would be oh, no. a bloodbath. Oh, it would no. be a bloodbath. Seriously? Oh, oh. Oh, 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 where are my pearls? I, I would clutch them right now. I cannot believe this man has called for political violence this many times and he's still on air. Somebody shut this man down. He used the word bloodbath this many times. He is a danger to society. And by the way, not just him, basically the entirety of the mainstream media and the left, but I repeat myself, have used that language for like, I don't know, forever because it's a freaking figure of speech. Listen, please, if you will, to all of these domestic terrorists. But as Politico.com reports tonight on the, quote, bloodbath at the RNC, 
Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath. Be a bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, oh but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. Ooh. That's really and tough. Trump has Ooh. left a lot of corpses in his wake. Oh, I mean, we yeah. can count the bodies corpses. as part of the, quote, MAGA drive to take over Maricopa County. Mm. And the headline refers to it as an impending bloodbath. Oh, no. Charles Blow has a new piece for The New York Times entitled A Biden Bloodbath. 2018 midterms, oh. you can bet that they 100 percent are fearing a slaughter. In fact, oh, the word blood. Slaughter. Massacre. Come up massacre. Frequently. The Republican Party will be destroyed. It's going to be a bloodbath. There's oh, going to no. be a bloodbath one way or the other. Bloodbath blood bath for Bernie Sanders. It's been a bloodbath. Oh. They're shaping up to be a bloodbath. <gasps> Head off a bloodbath in next year's crucial midterm. Off oh, year elections safe. are often a bloodbath. This week's oh bloodbath for safe. Democrats. A bloodbath at the ballot box. There could I'm be scared. a Republican bloodbath. They'll talk oh, about gosh. a bloodbath. It's a bloodbath. I have to talk about you. And oh, it's going to be a bloodbath all day long. It's in for a bloodbath. It hasn't been a bloodbath on the way I'm down. Sorry. Donald Trump bloodbath be a bloodbath. Predicted to this be a bloodbath. It may unsafe. not be a bloodbath. It would be a bloodbath. More of a bloodbath. I cannot it's going believe to be a bloodbath in November. Possible the violent Biden rhetoric. Bloodbath. Oh my gosh. This November. A bloodbath on Wall Street. This can be a bloodbath in, in Alabama into a bloodbath. Oh, there was a bloodbath. No. It was a bloodbath. We're down that's 800 enough. points. This that's enough. They know. They know Donald Trump. Didn't mean he was going to exact a blood exact a blood on half of America. Like, what was he going to do? Single handedly just exact a blood bath on America? Was he going to recruit help? Was he going to gain superpowers and do it himself? I don't know. I don't know. But they know that. They know that that's not what Donald Trump was going to do. They are the biggest purveyors of mis and disinformation that could ever exist. And they have no shame about it either. Which, by the way, I was personally reminded of this over the weekend. Y'all remember Calendar Gate? Yes, Calendar Gate. I thought we had put that to bed. But apparently, enemy of the people, New York Times writer Ruth Graham was desperate for clicks and decided to resurrect the topic of my friend Seth Weathers owner of Ultra Right Beer, putting out a Conservative Women of America calendar to raise money for Riley Gaines' nonprofit to save women's sports. And here was the headline. Piety and profanity. The raunchy Christians are here in the Trump era. A surprising number of evangelicals are rejecting modesty and turning toward the risque. Ah, oh, yes. Here comes the left to lecture us on being virtuous. Now, within the article, let me read you a quote. Uh, in one image, a Blaze TV host in a short skirt lights a copy of the New York Times on fire with a cigar. Another model, former NRA spokeswoman Dana Lash, hoists two rifles. Oh, no, the horror. How immoral. How raunchy. Let me show you just how raunchy Dana and I were in our pictures. Yes. Oh, no. Uh-oh. I think this is cut off, but in the actual picture that I wish that we had, I think you can see the top of my, you can see the top of my knee. Oh, God. Oh, no. And Dana, by the way, you all saw there, she's holding not one, but two rifles in a T-shirt of all things. Oh, my God, the horror. Look at that. Look at that raunchy behavior on part of Dana Lash wearing a loosely fitted T-shirt with two rifles looking naturally beautiful because she is. Oh no, the horror of me in a regular fitted, normal looking dress that would fit a Catholic school's dress code. Oh no, the horror, according to Ruth Graham, journalist at the New York Times. Now, Ruth, by the way, is based in Dallas and one of my producers reached out and asked her to join me today and you guys are gonna be shocked to hear she said she would pass. She's going to take a little pass on that one, which is unfortunate because I would have liked to have asked her, Ruth, can I call you Ruth? Great. Ruth, just wondering on the topic of morals and virtue and raunchy behavior, what's your position on providing porn to kids in schools? Hmm? Say what? What do you think is a bigger morality issue, Ruth? Chopping off children's body parts uh, or a Blaze TV host showing her knees in a picture burning a piece of paper barely fit to serve as a birdcage liner? Huh? Not you, Ruth, lecturing us on morality while advocating for abortion nine months into pregnancy, Ruth. Nothing to say for yourself? Yeah, I wouldn't want to defend my garbage article either if I were you. These people are trash. 
These outlets are trash. And the saddest part of all of it is that they'd look, don't get me wrong. A lot of them are really stupid. Looking at you, Joe Scarborough, but not stupid enough to not know what they're doing. Okay, they want to hold you to these unlivable standards that they never intend to live by themselves. And for a very long time, the right went along with that and they were just constantly on the defensive. No more. No, no, I'm not buying it anymore. Actually, I never bought it. Some of you bought it for a while. Don't. No more. You shouldn't buy it. Not one single second of this garbage anymore. All right, we've got to uh, take a quick break. We'll be back with more, but we want to thank our sponsor, this segment, Preborn. So look, I just talked about good old Ruth Graham journalists at the New York Times uh, and all of them, the lot of them who are advocating for women to have these unspeakable unspeakable late-term abortions. They want to advocate for abortion nine months into pregnancy, these fully formed babies that are being killed every day. And I want to talk to you about the ministry of preborn because what preborn does is they partner with this network of clinics who oftentimes these clinics are right next to these uh, abortion facilities where all of these tragedies take place. And instead of going into a Planned Parenthood, these women can go into a preborn clinic and there they will actually be shown the truth, okay? They will get to see their baby on the ultrasound. They will get to hear the heartbeat. And at that point, it is a life-changing event. Those of you who are parents, you know that. The first time, especially, I mean, all of them, right? But the very first time, your first baby, you sit down there, you're not sure what you're going to, what, how, how does this go? What's the process like? And you sit down there and they show you your baby and you hear the heartbeat. It's a life-changing moment. And you're like, holy crap, this is my baby and I'm supposed to protect it and nurture it. And I'm just saying $28 is the cost of an ultrasound for preborn. That alone, $28, could mean the difference between life and death of a child. So I would encourage you guys, please, please donate securely what you can over at preborn by going to preborn.com slash Sarah. That is preborn.com slash Sarah. You never know who you'll run into around these here parts. I want to welcome to the program Stu Bergier, host of Stu Does America, and uh, Pat Gray, host of Pat Gray Unleashed. I just like saw him in the hallway and I was like, hey, guys, want to come talk? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we see each other every day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually the next set over. So it's not at all a surprise that we'd see oh. each other. Okay. Well, I just... <laughs> <laughs> so, so I want to um, get into it. You know, do you ever feel like you're being repetitive talking about all of these stories about illegal immigration and more illegal immigrants who come in and do harm to Americans? And you're just like, I, I feel like I covered that yesterday, but like, it's really important and it keeps happening. And I feel like we need to keep talking about it. And that's how I feel today, because there was a story um, that I saw on the Post Millennial over the weekend that uh, revealed a 22 year old illegal immigrant from Lebanon was apprehended at the border. Um, this was back in March, but it's just being reported on. And when asked what he was doing, I don't I shouldn't laugh, but like you laugh so you don't cry. When asked what he was doing, he said that he was a member of the terrorist organization Hezbollah for seven years, where he, you know, just focused on jihad, killing non-Muslims, and then served as a guard at a weapons location for four years. And now his plans were to make it to New York City and to make a bomb. <laughs> so I can't imagine what could possibly go wrong. By the way, uh, just... Like, for reference, in the last five months, 59 members of the terrorist watch list were apprehended at the southern border. Um, and in fiscal year 2023, 172 on the same watch list were apprehended. So that's great because they're apprehending them all. Right. Oh, that's a great number to have that. Th they're, they're being apprehended, Stu. Oh, that's great news. They're, great news. Yeah. There's no gotaways. No. They're I all mean, just being apprehended. This story reminds you of the absolute fact that we're only catching the dumb terrorists. <laughs> like, <laughs> only the worst terrorist in the world would tell you they were here <laughs> to go to New York and build a bomb. <laughs> it's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And go through his whole resume as mm -hmm. if it's like a LinkedIn page. No, Border Patrol's like... 
So, sir, what do you plan to do now that you're in the United States? I'm going to go to New York City and make a bomb, yeah. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like, I, mean, I like the brazen nature of it. At least he's being honest, you know? Yeah. There's so much dishonesty in the world today, and it's nice to see <laughs> honesty from our terrorists. Uh, it, but it's incredible. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned, like, does it feel repetitive? I have literally been hearing Pat Gray talk about this for 20-plus years. <laughs> 20 years! Mm-hmm. And, and many of these stories the same, except, obviously— much, much worse now and yeah. much more repetitive. So, I mean, we're we're going down a, a rabbit hole that just keeps getting deeper and deeper. It's like you're talking to the MVP of the Super Bowl. Hey, Peyton Manning, you just won the Super Bowl. Now what are you going to do? <laughs> Go to I'm York. going to New York to make a bomb. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, I want you to talk to this guy with the gun over here. <laughs> let's see what happens after that. What did he think was Bizarre. going to occur? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. That's yes, a flight. Really what do you cool. Need? We, we've got Amtrak. How do you want to yeah. get up there? Let us help you. <laughs> well, he heard that people, that illegal immigrants were getting free flights. That's right. And busing. So maybe he mm. thought that he would get a, a free little trip. And make it easier. I mean, when the president of the United States runs on a platform that you are welcome here, what else is he supposed to think? I mean, mm-hmm. I guess he thought he'd be welcome with open arms. In this one circumstance, thankfully, he was not. But uh, I don't know, a million times or so every few months, they seem to be welcome with those open arms. Well, listen, I, I, you sound very xenophobic and racist oh, no. because oh, no. I have been reliably informed that if you point out, if you dare point out that there may potentially be some rapists, murderers, criminals, gang members, uh, mm-hmm. people who mean ill into terrorists. If you point those things out, that's very racist. You're not allowed to say that. These, these are only good people coming in search of a better life. These are only refu- these are refugees, Stu. How dare you? These are asylum seekers. Are they? Yes. That's interesting. That's the only thing that they are. You're, that's, you're not supposed to say anything else. I think we all realize that some of the people who come here are coming for economic reasons and uh, probably at the president's invitation. They actually took it seriously and said, "Okay, you know, uh, Eric Adams is telling me the sanctuary city you will be protected. I mean, we we were talking at one point about putting up billboards that give all the statements from these cities from the mayors so they know how welcome illegal immigrants are because they've all said these things. There's probably some that fall into that category. The the thing about it is we can't really know because Mm -hmm. we don't talk to any of them as they come across the border. Some of these asylum seekers are obviously a different circumstance, but generally speaking, we're talking about illegal immigrants. They're coming across the border without us approving or making those decisions. Hey, we want you here. And the one thing we know about them is they're coming here to break one of our laws. Now, again, asylum is, there's an asterisk there because, of course, it is legal to come here for asylum. We've been a very welcoming co- a country over the years, but they have now abused this to the point where it's- the proper process. Yeah, right. And now they've abused this process to where it's completely meaningless. So when the only thing you know about a person is they're coming here and they're breaking a law for whatever reason- you kind of start with a negative impression of them. Now, some of them may, you know, they're not necessarily harmful, maybe with the exception of, you know, some economic consequences here and there. Um, and that's a much smaller deal than what we're talking about when it comes to terrorists. But there are a lot of drugs. There are a lot of, ter- there's a lot of terrorism. There are a lot of weapons that come across mm-hmm. that border. For a, a, a party so consumed with gun violence, mm-hmm. you'd think this would be a massive priority for them not the last of their priorities, and in fact, encouraging the increase of all of this going on. It's a fascinating thing that I don't think they thought out very well, uh, but it, it's it's a massive part of that gun violence problem. So at the end of the day, you, we need massive reform. It's not just a wall. A wall would help right. in, a, in a big way, but it's not just a wall. It's it's that it's that reform when it comes to green cards and visas and uh, and asylum especially, because They've outsmarted the system. They've hacked the system. They know just saying asylum gets them basically what they want. And until we fix that, none of this is going to be fixed. What if, like, uh, let me get your thoughts on this, Pat. If I I agree with what you're saying, although I would add in mass deportation is, like, you have to have that in addition to a wall in order to get back to where we need to get. But, like, I think the system, the asylum process should not be... I'm going to overwhelm the border and Border Patrol is just going to give me like an IOU and then I'm going to show up in court in 2032. Like, I just think it should be stricter than that. Right. Like, I agree with you. I'm just oh, saying yeah. like the like we should make the asylum process more strict, not 
make it easier. Okay, I just want to make oh, clarify God, that yes. that's what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we have this now, this system of like, uh, yes, unless we find a real problem. Right. And what the, it should be the opposite. It right. should be no, unless there are really exceptional circumstances. Yeah, because, because Pat, to, to Stu's point, it's like, it's, it might sound nice and warm and fuzzy for us to say like, oh, you come from a country and you're you're poor? That's terrible. Come on over. But like, I don't that's think- not an, asylum. No, that's, that's not, not an asylum. economic, <laughs> poor economics or a poor economy is not a reason for you to be able to get asylum in our country. Yeah. You're supposed to be afraid for your life. Yes. And you're fleeing your country because you're going to be killed in that country if you don't. Those are the conditions. And very few countries- these people are coming from meet those conditions. Right. And but so everybody just says asylum now. And supposedly under this administration, that's good enough. Okay, come on in. Here's your court date. And like you said, it, it could be seven years from now, it could be ten, could be twelve years from now. We don't know. And there a lot of times, what is it, eighty five percent of them don't even show up for their court date. Right. Uh it's are you saying that people Same. who break our laws upon entering the country are sometimes untrustworthy? <laughs> it's a weird hard to believe, way isn't it? I, I mean, I'm it shocked. Sounds bad when you it say does. it that way, but yeah. yes, that's exactly I'm, what we're I'm saying. I'm shocked. <laughs> um, so, you know, we talk about building a wall. I would just like to point out, you know, we were talking about what's going on in Haiti with uh, old barbecue over there yeah. leading mm -hmm. thing, leading the charge. Who, I mean, you know, he just gets his name from the fact that if he doesn't like you and he gets in a fight with you, he just burns you alive. Mm -hmm. That's, he mm -hmm. just barbecues your body, um, which is, I, I, the name's fitting, all right? I'll give it to him. It's a fitting nickname, but uh, we see what's going on over there. And the Dominican actually built a 12-foot, Dominican Republic built a 12-foot border wall to protect them from the coup over in Haiti. Let's see uh, some of that. The crisis has fueled fears of another Haitian migrant exodus in the U.S. and here in the Dominican Republic. The DER has built a 12-foot tall border wall to protect them from gangs and crime. They call it a smart security fence with drones and cameras, night vision and watchtowers. Yesterday, we drove in dune buggies along the border with Haiti's uh, along the border with Haiti with a commander of CESFRONT, the Dominican Republic's Border Patrol. Construction of this new border wall began last year. The president of the Dominican Republic says so far about 100 miles of border wall has been completed. The goal is to eventually have a border wall run along the I'm entire just saying, border with Haiti. That's good. He's I'm just saying. <laughs> Looked pretty empty there. Didn't appear to be anyone trying to cross that. And I've look, I've been I got married in the Dominican. So I love the Dominican. I love the beach there. However, it's a very poor area. OK, very, very poor. Um, they can manage to build a border wall. It's all I'm saying. It's weird. They always <laughs> tell us it's like $300 million a mile. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> I could get you a contractor that will definitely beat that price. I mean. I say we bring some Dominican uh, refugees over and we have them help us build the border wall because they seem to have it under control. They don't need to know what they're doing. So many countries want to have their workers come work here. We'll allow this. <laughs> like, let, yes, we'll pay you your, we'll pay you top of the market in the Dominican Republic to come build it. It'll cost $18,000 a mile probably. Exactly. Uh, by the way, we can make fun of them ever having a leader named Barbecue. And I understand that's maybe not optimal. <laughs> The name of your leader. I think it is. Uh, our leader's middle name is Robinette. I would say that's way worse. <laughs> what Robinette is the word? That's like it's like Batman's even gayer friend. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is. Do, listen, mm -hmm. do you want to screw with someone named Barbecue? You know. Do you want to screw with someone named Robinette? Yeah, yes. yeah. You don't care at all. You're not going to be intimidated by someone named Robinette. <laughs> So good. All right. Okay. All right. We got to take a break. Um, we'll be back with more. First, we want to thank. <laughs> First, we want to thank our sponsor, Jason Medical. So, um, look, <laughs> this is a serious topic. Okay, because th right now, in the year 2024, there are vital medications that are being rationed in the United States. That's something that you know maybe used to happen in countries like the Dominican, but not here. <laughs> <laughs> but things aren't that way anymore. And this is just one reason why you need to have the Jace case on hand. Uh, it's a personalized emergency medication kit. It contains five essential antibiotics, which are going to treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. Like imagine that your child had strep throat and you couldn't find amoxicillin anywhere. 
that could be deadly, all right? It's customizable, by the way. It's got dozens of add-on medications available, so you can choose the ones that best fit you and your family's needs. They have ivermectin as an add-on option if you so choose. And what I'm recommending to you, if you have uh, grown children who have families of their own, maybe, get a Jace case for yourself and then get a gift card for your family so that they can make sure that they are protected as well, okay? Go to jacemedical.com, enter code Sarah at checkout for a discount on your order. That is jasemedical.com, code Sarah. So I wasn't here the end of last week, so I didn't get to, I don't know if you guys have talked about this yet, I didn't get to talk about the update on the Fannie Willis saga. So the end of last week, Nathan Wade, of course, the special prosecutor assigned by Fannie Willis, DA uh, Fannie Willis over in Georgia, Fulton County, also, you know, her lover, as it turns out, uh, she assigned him to prosecute Donald Trump and the 18 co-defendants in the Georgia RICO election interference case. He has, I regret to inform you, officially resigned. Now, oh no, I may have something to do with it that just hours before that, Judge Scott McAfee ruled that either uh, Nathan Wade or Fannie Willis had to exit over, of course, the allegations that Fannie uh, misused taxpayer dollars and uh, showed favoritism to Nathan Wade. Then, uh, look, I, I am... This is actually upsetting for me because I don't understand why she was allowed to stay on the case. The judge said, this is a quote, uh, she acted with a tremendous lapse in judgment, end quote, and he found an, quote, appearance of impropriety. So why would they not be both booted from the case? I don't understand. Now, last time I was on with um, Megyn Kelly, she we talked about this and it was the day that I was on with her. We talked about there was a uh, challenger who threw his hat into the ring to challenge this particular judge. And he happens to be, uh, you know, activist. Um, he's African-American. He's a big time like civil rights activist, BLM type things. And he threw his hat into the ring um, to challenge Judge Scott McAfee. And I'm just wondering how much that had to do with the judge's decision to just like boot Nathan Wade, but keep Fannie Willis, even though he admits that her actions were improper and not correct like i don't <laughs> how else do you come to that conclusion i'm just wondering mm, yeah um and to your point megan is a must listen to on on, on the funny willis thing yeah. in particular she's so great and so pumped up about it um and she of course knows this stuff really really yeah. well um you know it's interesting because uh, i the challenger thing is jesse jackson acolyte this this, right. this challenger is and it's a district where they voted i think it's 73 percent for biden so you have a situation where he his job has become very vulnerable and if he comes and throws fonnie willis off this case uh or they're gonna do it and they're gonna vote for the other guy anyway that's what drives me not like probably right if it's if it's that he yeah. heavily democrat it's like you're you're trying. I don't know. I just think Republicans yeah. so often they they're like, oh well, maybe if I play nice with them, yeah. that they'll leave me alone. No, they're not going to. They're still going to boot you out the first chance they get. Right. And it's funny because if you read the ruling, he pretty much says he knows they lied. Like he's like I like there. He says something like he said tremendous lapse, lapse in judgment and unprofessional activities. And you think, okay, he's referring to the affair. No, he's saying during the evidentiary hearing, mm -hmm. he knows they were lying. His argument, for what it's worth, seems to be like, well, we don't have in, in full proof, you know, because we have just the, both of them align their stories. And my job is to just rule on this thing in front of me, whether we have proof of, and motivation of, of it being financial. And I think you can argue the the prime motiva motivation with that was not financial. It was uh, something to do in the bedroom. It was more basically they wanted to hook up with each other. Um, so well, they could have done that without her assigning him as special prosecutor. True, although I uh, think they were doing that before she assigned him as special I think that's prosecutor. That's quite clear. I think we found that out in the hearing. I think she her, his point was just it wasn't about the money necessarily, um, which you could argue. Outside of that, though, he does outline four or five different organizations like the Georgia Ethics Commission that could do something about this. And a lot of those are, are controlled by Republicans. Mm -hmm. So, like, really, like, in Georgia, they should do something outside of this and get her pulled off of this. I don't think this is over yet. I hope it's not over. He tried, I think, in a very wishy-washy way to paint a path mm -hmm. to do something about this, acting as if he couldn't do anything. I don't believe him on that, and I think you're right on the Challenger thing, but still... I, I hope this can still be uh, taken care of, but it's hard to have hope. 
right, in, the, in, in this day and age. If it's not taken care of, it, it, maybe it's grounds for a mistrial. I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but it would seem to be if there's already been impropriety going on there mm-hmm. uh, with the prosecution, I would think that opens things up for the for the Trump team. But um, I, I mean, I think they've got a good case anyway. Uh, but who knows with with these particular uh, judges and prosecutors, what's going to happen here? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I, it's just it's it gets very depressing when you look at how much they have been able to just completely weaponize the judicial system against yeah. us. Oh, and then they get away with seemingly murder and nothing happens to them and they just get mm-hmm. a slap on the wrist and they get to go right back to doing whatever it was that they're doing. I mean, this is because I, I just want to remind everyone, this was like a separate hearing. This was just for misconduct. Yeah. For fa- I know you. she calls herself fun. I know, I know. That's much too fancy for me. I'm not going to give her the benefit. I'm trying to cure myself of it. Yes. I, 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 Fanny. Fanny Willis. Fanny Willis. It's like this was just the misconduct hearing on on this matter. And. Not only did she, was she, I mean, she perjured herself Blake. multiple times mm-hmm. and there's just no repercussions. And it's just so frustrating because, I mean, you have like, you know, people like Steve Baker who are being threatened with prison yeah. time yeah. over nothing, seemingly the most boring ex- uh, event at the Capitol ever, you know, um, acting as an independent journalist. And then you have all of these, you know, you have a DA, a Fulton County DA who I would say, I know you said that that they make the argument that the it's not uh, the motivation was not financial. I don't know. I would say six hundred and fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money to funnel to your lover who's taking you on trips. I agree with that um, completely. Uh, in fact, I don't agree with his analysis. I think it was partially financial. I don't know if that was the main motivation, but like you know, giving a job to your boyfriend is kind of a, a, a you know wasn't even qualified let's 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 remind everyone of that he had never tried a rico case like this before ever right it's just mm. insanity completely unqualified it's just insanity and it does say something too i think in, interesting about her motivation because when you have someone in the, and we have this like with letitia james in new york for example mm-hmm. um the motivation can be one of two things typically number one it's ideological they hate donald trump uh they want to come after him and i think that's that's largely letitia james um, Fonnie Willis, though, like you don't make a mistake like this if it's ideological. If your jo- if your only goal in life is to get Donald Trump removed, you don't risk an affair with your boyfriend, paying him six hundred thousand dollars and taking trips with him. There's also the other motivation, which is money, is fame, and 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 just self importance. And I think that's where Fonnie Willis, Fanny Willis, falls. Uh, I think she's on that side of the equation. I'm, I'm not saying she's not ideologically against Trump. She definitely is. But I think it's more motivated by that. Like, the idea that she would even testify in the first place was insane. Yeah. Her own lawyers were saying, don't do it. She's like, I'm going to get up there. I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And you get that sort of thing going with Fanny Willis, which makes her a fantastic character. I, I, you know, as a person who has to generate content every day, I don't want her to go away just quite yet. <laughs> like, I don't want anything. I don't want it, her to get what she wants with Donald Trump. I want it to fall apart at the end. But let it drag on for just a little bit longer because she's like the most fun thing to talk about in the news. She's wearing her dress backwards. Yes, she's wearing her <laughs> dress backwards, Sarah. God, that's a gift to all of us. I remember when I saw that on Twitter. I'm like, this is obviously Photoshop. She wasn't really. She was really right wearing. I asked Hillary. I said, Hillary, is she wearing her dress? She's wearing her dress wearing backwards. Her dress it backwards. was real. Yes, she was wearing her dress backwards. Wow. She doesn't know what continent she's oh, on. Oh, no. <laughs> she doesn't know where Belize is and she went to it. <laughs> I, I just, my t- honestly, my takeaway from this is like, are we just handing out like law degrees to just any mm. old person mm. that just walks up? It seems to be like we're yeah. handing them out like candy because you Especially got, if you hate Donald Trump. Yes. Here, here's a law degree. Go yes. prosecute him for yes. something. You've got Kamala Harris who's like can't speak sentences Mm -hmm. coherently you've got this chick who doesn't even know how to put on a dress Mm -hmm. (laughs) what the hell's going on in in law schools it was fascinating when i asked hillary about that you know she hillary's the nicest person in the world yeah and i was like so hillary is she really wearing that dress backwards she's like well I mean, you can have zippers in the front, but typically they'd be decorative. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and this one was like the little one that goes, you know, in, in the, the back. back. <laughs> so stupid. I do agree with you. It is fun for content.
It's, she's great. I mean, she yes. she's. I mean, this is the most entertaining thing that's happened the entire election cycle. She's completely <laughs> nuts, and we're learning everything about her life. Like mm-hmm. I, I do love that. I mean, it's it, sure our society is falling apart as um, we laugh, but at least we get uh, to laugh a little. We do get to laugh a little bit. Um, all right, so we got to take another quick break, but I want to remind you guys if you have not yet seen. Uh, Blaze TV just released our third installment in the Blaze original series, available only to subscribers. So make sure, if you are not a subscriber, make sure that you go subscribe so you can check it out. It's called Texas versus the Feds, How the Elites Use the Border Crisis Against Us. And uh, Jason Buttrell, our very own Jason Buttrell, and the Blaze Originals team uh, went on a road trip with the Take Our Border Back convoy to the front line of the border crisis and uncovered what was really happening during Governor Abbott's fight against, sorry, fight against federal agents. Um, we, we watched it last week. It was very, very well done. And, um, you know, you are going to learn something, I would say. If you're not really in on what's going on specifically with Texas and the border, I promise you, you're going to learn some things that you didn't realize. You can go to therealbordercrisis.com. Use code BORDER to get $30 off of your Blaze TV subscription. That is therealbordercrisis.com. Got something to say? Leave Sarah a message at 888-969-5113. So we often hear from all of these environmentalists about like how to reduce our carbon footprint. And, you know, they they said like, we got to get rid of cow farts, <laughs> which I don't know how you do that. I'm still unclear on that. Um, nice cows. If you're nice, to the, nice enough to the cows, they'll, they'll stop farting. Just ask stop. them politely. Okay. Yeah. Ask really? Excuse me. You got to be very polite about it. <laughs> Shoot, please. Sarcasm, please. Pat. Please, please stop please. farting. See, uh, they, would detect like that? The, they would detect the sarcasm. Oh, they would. Oh, to fart. Wow. They wouldn't buy that. They wouldn't buy wow. Don't call Pat over to do it, okay? <laughs> um, so then they were like, well, we should just eat bugs. Mm. Gotta get, just They're get trying. rid of the cows. They're Let's eat bugs. Yeah. Well, hold bugs on. Don't fart, I guess, right? <laughs> I don't know. No bug farts. It might be just fart? so small. <laughs> the emission is so yeah. small. It's not that, that it's, loud. It's negligible. You it. yeah. No, you don't care about the noise. It's the carbon. Oh, it's the oh, emissions. Right. Yes, yeah. the methane. Is <laughs> yeah, the methane. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're moving on from bugs. And uh, now it turns out new research from a study on scientific reports released uh, March 14th says python farming appears to offer tangible benefits for sustainability and food systems resilience so um now we are supposed to eat snakes wow yes uh in order to save the environment now the study Mm -hmm. says that not only can it complement existing livestock systems like cattle pigs and chicken but it may actually offer better returns in terms of production efficiencies claiming that fasted pythons up to 4.2 months lost only 0.004% of their body mass per day, so it eases the demand on animal food consumption. And um, they're just encouraging us to start eating um, pythons. (laughs) Yeah, there's a China snake farm. Um, I just, you know, like we see all of these other countries and they're eating apparently snakes and dogs and cats and we're like, "Uh, I think we're better than that. And apparently the environmentalists don't think that we are. So mm. I got to ask, which one of you is going to be the first one to consume mm. pythons? It's where it pays to be a vegetarian, Sarah. <laughs> uh, there's very few times in life that it's good to be a vegetarian. And this is, this is it. I'm always last in line for the snake meat. Mm. Um, I believe there was a documentary uh, titled uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, mm. which covered this topic. Mm-hmm. And if you remember, they <laughs> cut into the snake and all the other snakes came out. I... Oh! I Draw the lo- like. There's, I, I, I think I'd probably eat bugs before I eat snakes. Like, I don't want anything to do with them. I'm terrified of them. I want nothing to do with that. When they're on their plate, though, they're not as scary as like in the wild. That's. You know? I'm not saying they're as scary, but <laughs> they're really gross. I'm not gross. scared they're of the sick. cooked snake when it's on my plate, but I'm, yeah. I'm still but, equally as grossed out by yeah, it. Yeah, it's nasty. That's just nasty. I'm not ever eating snake. I, I, I don't care if every cow I eat kills the planet a little bit more. I'm still eating cow. I'm not going to ever eat snake, and they can't force me to do it. I'm no. not going to eat bugs, No. and I'm not going to eat snakes. No. I'm an American. <laughs> I don't have to, so I'm not going to. This is and, how the, this uh, is how the planet died. This is how. Yeah, this is how. Well, all right. Well, I'll accept my responsibility helping kill the planet. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you know what? I don't feel bad about it either. I don't feel a bit bad about not, it. No, not really. Not at all. These nope. things were put here on the earth for us to eat. Yes. Snakes? Uh, no. And bugs? <laughs> no. no. Cattle. Oh, cattle. Just cattle. cattle. Not Definitely snakes or bugs. Chicken. chicken. But as you know, Stu, yeah. I'm mostly vegetarian. That's true. That's I mean, true. yes, I do eat a little chicken and fish mm-hmm. and beef. Steaks, you know, right. roasts, mm-hmm. yeah, brisket, yeah, well, yes, uh, and yes, pig, you mm. know, pork, yeah, a lot of, yeah. a lot of, a lot of pork, a lot of pork, a lot of pork, yeah. a lot of, amount of, of pork. Yeah. yeah, but most animals on this planet, I don't touch. Bear, I don't eat it. <laughs> never, never even lion, had it, right? I've never even tasted a lion. Mm-hmm. I don't eat alligator. I don't eat uh, kangaroo. But snakes or bugs, you're uh, snakes or bugs. I'm I'm out there. Out. Too, What's so. the craziest thing you've ever eaten? Mm. I do not. I am not adventurous when it comes you're to. Not, no, I'm not either. I've, I have had alligator. I've had alligator. Really? A fried alligator tail is good. I had, I, actually, now that I think of it, I had it once at Disney World. They were. It was not. It's not bad. Yeah. Was it a yeah. character? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, they were. Bad. <laughs> they, I'm someone from like the, the gator from Hook. Yeah. It's like mm, yeah. this is delicious. I up and I ate him. Uh, it was pretty tasty. <laughs> Tastes a lot like chicken. Uh, um, I don't know. I'm, I I don't eat exotic things, so. Yeah. Rocky Mountain Oysters. You know what that is? Yes. Oh, yeah. Have you had that? I've had that. Really? Is it good? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't need to try it then. Pat, uh, no, Pat's here not. to let me know. Um, mm-hmm. Just do anything adventurous from you? I don't, I can't think, I mean, not really. I was never, I wasn't even an adventurous eater before I stopped eating meat, so. Probably just your protein loaf. Yeah, well, yeah, it's true. I mean, a lot of weird crap, right? Like <laughs> yeah. I've had a lot. I yeah. definitely like. I mean, Pat had Worthington's protein one time <laughs> I did. with me, and and well, it's not that bad. Not that bad. Not that bad. Uh, that bad. Um, some of the stuff is weird. I will say, like you know, Indian quite. food. I'm like this with. I I there's like a million vegetarian options. All of them have really long, scary names, so I can't eat any of it. That so mm-hmm. I, I nothing in the Indian food thing do I, I really dive into. There's too many spices. They're, they're weird colors. I same. I don't understand. Also, it. what was that movie? There's something some Ben Stiller movie where he. I gotta tell you, he had really bad bathroom problems after eating Indian food. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it was scary. Uh, Long came Polly, I think it was. All right, uh, we gotta go to break. First, we wanna thank uh, our sponsor of this segment, tell you about uh, the new film from Angel Studios. Okay, it's mm-hmm. Cabrini. Audience and critics agree Cabrini is a must-see. 98% audience score, 91% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. That's huge. It's based on so the true good. story, yes, of one woman's fight for the equality, health, and happiness of immigrant orphans. Uh, it's from the award-winning director of Sound of Freedom, which I know we all enjoyed, uh, comes this powerful epic of Francesca Cabrini, an Italian immigrant who arrives in New York City in 1889 and greeted by disease, crime, and impoverished children. She sets off on a daring mission to convince the hostile mayor to secure housing and health care for society's most vulnerable. It is a really, really riveting story. You guys have got to go see it. It is in theaters now. Purchase your tickets, tickets in advance online over at angel.com slash Sarah. That is Angel.com slash Sarah. Just a reminder, uh, this is the leader of the free world. Never know what, okay, Jill's giving him instructions. He's like, uh, wait, which way do I, which way do I go? <laughs> this way? I can't. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna... You can just hear that noise coming out of it. You really can. The Joe Biden shuffle. Oh. I'm just happy he made it down the stairs. So did not follow instructions oh, uh, very well. <laughs> it's like you had one he can't. job. He can't. You know what? He's incapable of doing what they tell him to do when you exit. He Every time it's like, over there. No. Oh, oh, there! What's that? It's a door, Joe. Walk through it! (laughs) Can you open it? Oh, what? Anyway, (laughs) not a joke. Not a joke, man. Go jump! Go jump! Uh... We need you.